Okay, this time around we're going to be playing uh, the Guns of August. Um, it's a game made by the Avalon Hill Game Company back in 1981. It concerns the uh, the Great War, also known as World War One. I'm going to be playing just the 1914 scenario, and um, I'm going to give you kind of a brief overview of. Uh, the components, the map, the rules, etc. Okay, this is a typical combat unit. This one happens to be a French unit. Um, the little X's at the top, of course, represent the unit size. In this case, it is a core sized unit. The F on the left hand side stands for French. The number on the right hand side is just a unit designation. The box with the uh, lines inside of it indicate that it is a infantry unit. The number on the left is the attack factor, the number in the middle is the unit's defense factor, and the number on the right is the unit's movement allowance. Pretty standard stuff for this era. In addition there are support units. Um, the one on the left is a siege artillery unit. Um, its numbers are, of course, attack strength of 3, defense strength of 1, and a movement allowance of 1. These obviously help uh, in attacking fortified positions as well as just artillery for regular combat. Uh, the number of the unit on the right is an engineer. Of, it's useful for building forts. It has similar stats. And um, that's pretty much it for the different types of units. Of course, we have the standard markers for, you know, year, month, whatever. And, um, well, that's pretty much it for those guys. Sorry about that. I cut myself short. Um, anyway, as I was saying, it gives you the uh, requirements for building your fleet and like I said, a more detailed uh, naval combat results. And then we have uh, another article from the general, Mobilization of Armies in uh, the World War, and it just basically gives you some rules and procedures on uh, changes uh, the number of replacements and reinforcements you get. Instead of the set amount, you've got kind of a little bit more freedom to uh, determine what you build or don't build. So anyway, that's pretty much the rules. Like I said, they're second edition. They're not very heavy, pretty light as a matter of fact, especially in the basic game. So anyway, when I come back, I'm gonna talk about the sequence of play and hopefully we'll get started. Okay, um, we're gonna do the abbreviated sequence of play for the Guns of August. Um, what we start out with, and this uh, this will include um, the advanced and maybe some optional rules, which I will probably not be using all of those. I'm going to try and stick with the basic game, but we'll see how far I go with that. I may have to add some advanced rules just to uh, simulate the opening stages of the war a little bit better. <clears throat> and my uh, knowledge and understanding of the Great War um, is woefully lacking in many details. So, just going to have to bear with me on um, my knowledge and uh, stuff of that, uh, that era, <clears throat> that particular conflict. So anyway, the abbreviated sequence of play, we start with the Central Powers player turn. There's a War Declaration phase, which is in the basic rules. Supply Determination phase. Um, this is where you determine, uh, obviously, which units are in or out of supply. Um, out of supply units get an isolation marker, I believe at this time, um, which will have an effect later on. Uh, let's see here real quick. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Let's 
So anyway, I think you put the isolation marker, marker on during the um, supply phase. Okay, then we go to the movement phase, which like I said is pretty standard. Um, there's regular, rail, and C movement. Each of those has special prerequisites and such. Uh, there's a combat phase in which uh, combat units and combat support or support units um, can engage uh, enemy forces. Um, combat is not mandatory um, for the most part and you cannot attack support units which are stacked with a combat unit on a one-for-one -one basis. Um, if you have an infantry unit and a an artillery unit they can pair up, stack together, whatever, and you have to attack them both uh, as one combined unit. Uh, if you don't have enough regular combat units to cover all your support units, the support units can be attacked separately. So, anyway, moving on, we have a demoralization removal phase. Demoralization occurs uh, as a result of combat. Then we have the isolation phase. This is where you check uh, all your units which are isolated and the ones which are isolated, uh, you check supply and if any of the units are not isolated you can remove the isolation marker otherwise units that still have an isolation marker um, some of them can be isolated for a couple turns and then they're eliminated so I believe how that, that's how that works I always get that confused but um, we'll look at the note here real quick isolation markers are only placed and advanced during the supply determination phase Isolated units are only eliminated during the isolation phase. So anyway, that's kind of how that works. Then the Allied player turn is pretty much the same as the um, Central Powers uh, turn. And then if I was going to play with more of the advanced stuff, we'd have an inner player turn in which you do the naval phase, morale phase, a reinforcement phase, which will still be used in this one. Game turn phase and the weather phase. So anyway. That's uh, how that's going to work, and I will try to demonstrate that as I go ahead and move through the first turn. Probably won't give a detailed uh, account of each turn, but since there's only five, perhaps I will. Um, we'll see. Depends upon how much time I get and all that stuff. So, anyway, I think we're going to be ready to start here. I'm going to go ahead and put this little uh, video up and then we will probably start with turn one next hopefully I'll get at least one video per day or every other day so anyway still new at this still a little nervous about it um, but we'll see what happens I like the games I like uh, watching other people's videos and I like toying uh, with mine so anyway till later Okay, the game comes with two major charts. This one here is pretty much just a player aid. Well, not really two charts, I guess I should say. Uh, two uh, documents or whatever. Uh, one's a player aid chart, the other is the actual rules. Um, the player aid pretty much gives you the abbreviated sequence of play, the reinforcement schedule, uh, combat results table, uh, the different victory conditions based upon the uh, game year, the weather table, morale, naval interception, variable entry, and all that kind of stuff. Let's see here. The game was designed by uh, Robert Bema, who designed uh, several other games that I have. Um, I like his... Uh, I like his uh, style of writing and the type of games he designed. Um, the development was by Frank Davis and some of the playtesters were like Joe Bukowski, um, Bruce Milligan, Kevin Zucker, and people like that. People pretty well known in the uh, game industry. Roger McGowan did uh, the game components and the cover. So anyway you get this uh, player aid on it's double sided the side on the back gives you your scenario setups the units that you will uh, 
receive based upon the year, re replacements, reinforcements, that kind of thing. And it's broken down by unit type. Let's see if I can give you a shot of that real quick. You got your different unit types up here. And the numbers that you uh, receive initially. And over here in the scenario setup chart, it tells you the year, what alliance your units belong to, uh, other information like that basically. So that's pretty much uh, it for the uh, player aid. I'm going to move quickly to the rule book. Uh, let's see. The basic rules are basic and there are advanced and then we have optional rules basic rules pretty much cover sequence of play whether or not units are going to be belligerent or if they're going to be uh, neutral and the declaration of war requirements uh, now I see why this is so hard to do with one hand then we have how our country is conquered control of hexes, zones of control, stacking limitations, supply and isolation and so on and so forth. We have movement rules which are composed of regular movement, rail movement and just want to show a brief overview of my initial starting positions. Um, of course the German units are in the dark gray and the French units are in the light green. Um, and we have, I've set up some of the neutral countries, Belgium and the Netherlands. Um, just because uh, I intend them to be part of the, one of the first uh, countries I attack. Oh, that's probably too fast. And way up here in England, we have uh, British units, which are ready to uh, support the French. That is the BEF. Um... But anyway, this is just going to be the initial setup. I'll try to go over the um, sequence of play, either as a probably a, a rough summary of the sequence of play, and then I'll probably give a more detailed sequence of play uh, as the game starts. Like I said, I'm going to do the 1914 uh, scenario, since it's only five turns. Um, there's no way I have the uh, strength, stamina, endurance, whatever, to do the whole war at this time. So anyway, in honor of the uh, centennial of World War One, I'm going to go ahead and give this game a shot and see if I can uh, gain any insight into that particular war. And just to try this system out, I've had this game probably 20, 20 plus years. So hmm. thought I might go ahead and just dig it out and see uh, what I can find of it. So, when we come back, we're going to work on the uh, rules and stuff. The map uh, is a fairly standard um, map, as you would find for Avalon Hill back in uh, the 80s. Um, not the most beautiful thing in the world, but it's quite functional, and it has a certain charm to it. You will notice uh, we have rivers, and there are towns. The red towns are objective areas. Uh, I don't know if you can see it here. But like uh, Dijon or something like that. French city. It's red so it's, uh, it's a victory uh, objective. Which, um, which you want to have. Uh, you want to capture that and all the other ones you can to uh, force the nation to surrender. Anyhow we have rough terrain here which gives uh, negative uh, combat shifts to the attacker. Um, we have clear, and that's about it. I think there might be some marshes up uh, in the Netherlands, uh, but other than that, that's pretty much it for terrain. Um, I think this might be, I'm not sure what this yellow is real quick. Let me double check. Uh, 
looks like it is a coastal hex or a beach. So I guess that has something to do with the naval invasions and stuff. So anyway, that's pretty much pretty much the terrain that will affect the game. There are of course various other things printed on the map board such as uh, rail lines and stuff like that. So anyway, that's a brief overview of the map.